This is a Tracking the Tropics update with a certified most accurate weather team at First Coast News. Well, hey, everybody. I'm meteorologist Lewis Turner. We're still watching Milton here. I want to get you the latest uh, information. The 11 o'clock numbers are in. Hurricane Center is getting, um, well, getting some pretty interesting information in about this storm. So you're looking at the satellite imagery right now, you're seeing the wind speeds at 155 miles an hour. Uh, that's a Category 4 hurricane. A uh, Category 5 hurricane would be 157 miles an hour. So we're just uh, measly two miles an hour off, which I fully anticipate as we get in the next couple of hours, Hurricane Center will have upgraded this storm to a Category 5 storm. So it has a trek to make across the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, one thing I'll, uh, you'll note here uh, with our forecast cone, a lot stayed the same uh, since our big update came in at 5 a.m. We had another at 8 and then now our big 11 o'clock numbers. That, that, that The 11 o'clock update is when the Hurricane Center really takes the computer modeling and kind of uh, zeroes in their latest track. And right now that track is awfully similar to the one that was drawn up by the Hurricane Center a little earlier this morning, which is uh, generally a thought that we're gonna have a center line track over Tampa. Um, of course, within that uh, 100, 150 or so miles between what would be uh, Cedar Key on the northern end of the uh, forecast cone or down south of Fort Myers on the southern side of that cone, it is very possible and, and, and that a uh, landfall can happen anywhere within that, that cone. That's um, how the Hurricane Center draws these up. Now, that does not mean that's the limit of the impacts, correct? So we talk about that a lot. You know, the, the center line does not draw the extent of the impacts, though. Uh, this storm, a little different from Helene, is it's a little more compact, a little tighter uh, than we what we experienced with that. Not to directly compare storm to storm, but as we look at our uh, uh, forecast models here, I'm just kind of staring off at the graphics with you um, here on the screen. And um, as it does strengthen to a five, it, Hurricane Center feeling like it's not going to maintain that strength. The, the, the guidance is that it will actually weaken to a three, which is a major hurricane, which is going to provide a hundred year uh, level storm surge in the Tampa area if this track holds. Um, reason being, there's a good bit of shear that this storm will deal with and, and perhaps even some drier air that can mix in because of a front that is trying to dip down and actually steer this thing a little bit uh, south of uh, the northern edges of Florida, so our first coast. But there's your, your landfall, still sticking with that Wednesday night sort of time frame. So Wednesday 8 p.m. here along the first coast, northeast Florida, starting to feel the impacts of, of this before landfall even on the edges. But this still seems to be lining up for Jacksonville and the surrounding area as a Wednesday night, overnight type of event, something that uh, will most of us, the normal sleep time uh, that we'll be experiencing it. So the best thing to do, best advice I can give you, we will go county by county, by the way, here in just a minute, but with the potential for power outage, with the uh, potential to, uh, to, for, for it to be in the middle of the night, let's have a way to keep things charged, right? So power blocks or um, have, have those, the, the, you know, the things that you plug in, you charge them up and then you don't need a, a power source. You can just have that as the power, you know what I'm talking about. It is the year 2024, right? Okay. Um, and then also um, have plenty of double A's or whatever batteries your lanterns take or your flashlights, et cetera. Now I'm showing you the computer models. This is what the Hurricane Center is using to kind of derive its cone. And you can see the northern edges and the southern edges with that center line still right over Tampa. A couple of uh, models we talk about a lot, the GFS and the European model, uh, the longer range models. So the green is the European model. The purple would be the GFS and uh, the green, uh, being the Euro a little bit faster, the GFS slowing down just a bit, so a little bit later landfall, a little bit stronger of a storm as well, but both seem to have that Tampa or South sort of track. A more Southern track means fewer impacts here as far as the strong impacts uh, along the first coast, that more Northern path certainly means uh, stronger impact. So uh, your Euro model, uh, we begin to feel those a little bit later on Wednesday afternoon, overnight, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And then by Thursday, later in the day into the evening, this thing has since moved out. GFS a little bit slower. As we take a look, we start to feel those impacts Wednesday evening, strong landfalling hurricane there near Tampa. So this just gives you kind of an idea roughly of timing and of the uh, when we'll begin to feel the first of those rainfall 
impacts. So I'm going to take this moment. I'm going to show you the, uh, the watches right now, but by all means, fire off any questions you may have. I'm, I am going to show you county by county. So if you have a specific to town or county question, cool. I might answer that coming up here in that graphic as we go through each of our areas. But by all means, any questions you may have, fire away, and I'm going to do my best to, to answer those. But you see the watch. Uh, hurricane watch issued basically that, that that purple or pinkish area is everywhere within the cone right of uh, the the west coast of florida that was in the cone is currently in that hurricane watch meaning conditions are likely within 48 hours we'll get the warning when it's within 36 and you might be wondering well why haven't we seen any in the first coast yet and very likely since our impacts will be wednesday evening 48 hours from then would be sometime tonight so uh, we'll probably see those watches issued uh, to some degree, whether it's tropical storm or hurricane watches issued for counties around the first coast, thinking perhaps Putnam County, Flagler County, St. John's counties, as well as portions of Duval. So we'll see uh, that a little bit later on. So here is your county by county answer. If you have a question about that, I mentioned Putnam and Flagler, since it's the most southern of our counties, closest to the center line uh, that could be cutting across I-4, talking about sustained winds at 60 and up, gusts of 75 and up and that would be hurricane force gusts so that means power outage when you get those 60 mile an hour and up then we start dealing with power outages and pretty widespread power outages as well rainfall 6 to 12 inches so that's localized street flooding we already have had uh, a lot of rain recently so um, with ditches and retention ponds full uh, we're going to deal with some uh, locally heavy uh, uh, flooding there all right st john's county so i'm looking at st augustine i'm thinking about the matanzas river uh, uh, Bayfront and uh, all of that uh, along the Avenida Menendez, the flooding that we typically see and have seen in hurricanes past, probably very likely as we get a surge of four to six under this current uh, track. So watch those gusts of 75 and up. That'll have an impact on bridges, Davis Shores, et cetera, along uh, St. Augustine. Ah, yeah, got a question. Uh, yeah, this so is Andy. <laughs> Hello, Andy here. Uh, Lauren wants to know, the winds during Helene were pretty intense in our area in Duval um, on, oh, I'm sorry, St. John's Bluff. I thought it said St. John's County. St. John's Bluff, um, an area yeah. on St. John's Bluff yep. north near the river. Will these winds be similar? Very similar. I, I, yeah, I think we're going to get, uh, in, and as we took it, Duval, in fact, right now, perfect timing for the question. So St. John's Bluff, getting near that river, thinking like the maybe that's the Fort Caroline area, you get up close to St. John's River, your worst conditions are gonna be Wednesday night, overnight as mentioned into early Thursday morning, a surge of two to four. So if you are susceptible to higher than normal tides and the tidal flooding, um, so this would include downtown Jacksonville as well, Hogan's Creek, McCoy Creek, and then all the way down through Clay County into Black Creek. Um, so localized flooding even into homes and businesses that have seen this before with the, the higher than normal tides. Uh, but we could have gusts of 60 plus um, there uh, here across Duval County and that would be Helene adjacent. Uh, although at Mayport we had with uh, Helene we did have an 80 mile an hour gust. So um, we'll see if we kind of get to that and that would be very close to where this person was asking about. So I appreciate the question. Lauren, um, zooming up to Nassau, Glen, Camden counties. All right, surge one to two feet. We're getting a little bit on the northern reaches of this, right? Especially up in Glen County. But when you're still dealing with gusts of 55 and up, you're still thinking about power outages. Columbia, Baker, Brad, Virginia, we're on the western and northern edges of this. So I'm going to put you and lump you kind of in with inland southeast Georgia, where there are still power outages uh, from Helene. So uh, certainly could have the potential for that. I, but this will not, for those uh, inland areas, southeast Georgia and Columbia uh, County, will not be a repeat of Helene. So I'll wrap it with the seven day. Uh, and Andy, what are, we, what are we seeing on the internet? Uh, we have Any more? some, I know you don't like comparing storms, but someone That's said, good. Anita asked, hearing we should expect a storm like Irma, is this correct? Irma, okay, so here, here's why that comparison is being drawn. And, and it's a good question. So with Irma, uh, the week ahead of Irma, uh, we had a pretty good nor'easter. Um, blowing a lot of uh, wind inland. Push, when we get those northeast winds, of course, that, that feeds water uh, into the inlets. So the St. John's River Inlet that uh, heads out the Mayport jetties, of course, feeding St. John's River into downtown. Uh, Matanzas uh, Inlet there in St. Augustine, feeding a lot of river uh, water into town. So what that does on incoming tides pushes even more water in. On outgoing tides, it doesn't allow much water to come out. So you get this stacking up issue. So when you couple that with something like Irma, which kind of came right up the gut, different path, right? And a little bit longer 
of a period of time going up the state of Florida that we were getting these northeast, the even stronger northeast winds plus the rains. We got some historic flooding downtown Jacksonville uh, into businesses, into homes, through San Marco, Riverside, downtown, St. Augustine, Davis Shores, and downtown St. Augustine, and, and so many different areas, right? Um, I think what this separate, and, we, and we've had those similar conditions with the nor'easter, right, lately. Uh, that's why I think we're going to get that potential four to six foot surge in some spots, especially St. Augustine, maybe up to four feet in downtown. But this one's going to move a little bit quicker, it looks like, at a different angle. Um, so a, a little bit quicker across the peninsula. But it is something that we all need to be uh, thinking about and prepared for, um, that potential four surge. So take, today's the day, the, you know, we've got the, at least the 48 hours. We're not even in the watch area yet, but we will be soon. Today would be the day to, to take all precautions and ha have Irma kind of in the, in the back of our minds. We weren't able to get to this um, yeah. in the last stream, and I had someone ask again, St. Simons Island. Oh, yeah, St. Simons. Okay, so let's uh, zoom on back. I had a question about St. Simons. A friend of mine was uh, asking on Facebook about um, St. Simons. He works at Sea Island. They had a lot of trees down there. All right, I, I promise you my little clicker thing is going to get me there. So we were talking about one to two foot uh, tidal surge in Glen County, and that would be specifically for St. Simons. I, I think you guys up in St. Simons got blasted uh, with some really strong gusts in Helene. It'll still be possible, but as mentioned, Glen County, especially kind of on the northern uh, edges of seeing the worst of these impacts, um, so as mentioned, storm surge on St. Simons. So two feet would be the top end at this point with our impacts. So that would be two feet on top of a normal um, high tide. Uh, rainfall, that two to six inch range and gust 55 and up, which certainly could take down some bigger trees, tree limbs and provide a few uh, power outages as well. So have that power outage plan. All of us, everybody watching this, whether uh, you're on the first coast of Florida, Southeast Georgia, or you're um, maybe closer to where the direct path is going to be. So certainly thoughts, prayers with everybody is in that path, but the power outage uh, plan is going to be a good one uh, c considering timing of this being overnight and being pitch black dark. Andy. I mean, it's 11.55. It is. Oh, I got to do the new show. Yeah, got to do the, the new show. The new show's in five minutes, so come to that as well. We'll have all the latest numbers, uh, but I appreciate you hanging out with us here online. We'll be doing these early and often with my superstars in the digital department and in Malcolm. Is Malcolm here? He is, baby. I didn't hear Malcolm once. All right, uh, we'll be shouting them out throughout. All right, have a great day, everybody.